My God, I hate drugs. The Cotabato City Bomb Squad is responding to a call about a fragmentation grenade found in a side street. This comes as residents in the city cast their vote on whether to ratify the Bangsamoro Organic Law. Our correspondent David Santos now joins us from Cotabato City. David. Yes, we, um, as you mentioned, uh, the members of the Cotabato City Bomb Squad are currently uh, in this area in Cotabato City in Barangay. Uh, RH1, they call it uh, RH1. Uh, uh, as we are showing to you live pictures wherein uh, the uh, uh, members of the of the team urging people nearby to uh, move away because they're gonna dis disable this uh, uh, suspected to be a fragmentation grenade that was found abandoned uh, uh, several minutes ago in this side street here in uh, Barangay, Rosary Heights. Um, it is located exactly in, uh, uh, in the corner of Sousa Street and uh, uh, San Juan Street. Uh, accordingly, um, some residents here called the uh, Cotabato City PNT to report about this uh, fragmentation the grenade that they saw earlier today, and uh, that prompted the authorities to come here and uh, check on it now. Earlier, they placed uh, sandbags over it because uh, they're going to dis disable it. More likely, uh, they're going to explode it uh, just as part of a safety procedure in handling uh, such cases. Uh, we did not want to bother the authorities performing their job, but, uh, their job, but basically that's how we interpret what they're doing right now. But that, I guess you must have heard. I don't know if we caught, we caught that on TV, but basically there was this... Uh, loud explosion, part of the, uh, the disabling uh, process that the uh, uh, Cotabato City Bomb Squad uh, performed in handling uh, that uh, fragmentation grenade. So that just gives you Ria, an idea, a picture of how interesting this day is going to be here in Cotabato City. Time and again, uh, officials and authorities have been saying that uh, the security uh, has been very uh, tight, in, uh, rather uh, intense here in uh, Cotabato City. Uh, this uh, city has been placed under Comele control uh, and also um, Cotabato City being part of Mindanao is also uh, under, still under martial law. So we can expect that the authorities will have their hands full in uh, uh, really addressing security uh, issues, rather threats uh, that this uh, city is facing today as it uh, holds, uh, as, as it part participates in the regional uh, referendum for the Bangsamoro Organic Law. Yeah. David, talk to us about the location of this grenade that they found and just um, deliberately detonated. Is it near any precincts, near um, any security outposts, as well as the one last night? Did you see any kind of pattern? If you recall, uh, like we mentioned earlier, uh, when we did our first live shot, we, uh, we, uh, we reported about another grenade throwing incident last night that was around uh, 9 p.m. Uh, it, uh, it happened in an adjacent barangay, or at least a, a few barangays from here. Uh, we don't know yet if, if, if they are related. Uh, some people we spoke to here were saying that uh, a kid uh, supposedly saw two men uh, earlier today uh, abandon, uh, abandon a uh, still an unidentified uh, object in this area, they are presuming that that could have been the fragmentation grenade that was uh, disabled uh, a few moments ago. So, um, you can just ex uh, uh, authorities have yet to complete the investigation on last night's grenade throwing incident that happened just near uh, the house of being rented by a municipal trial court judge uh, residing here in Cotabato City now. Yeah, this, this, this uh, grenade. grenade that was found uh, 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 this morning is just uh, a few barangays away from that uh, incident. So we don't know yet if these two are related or if, if these uh, incidents are also in any way related to the ongoing plebiscite uh, that is being uh, conducted here in ARMM. Ria. All right. So, David, this one, which they just detonated this morning, is that near any polling stations or precincts? Uh, 
uh, we are not sure um, because uh, it's my first time to come here. But we, uh, from, the, from the looks of it, um, we don't see any uh, 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 public schools, which are normally the vo designated voting centers uh, for you know, our, our electoral uh, pro uh, exercises. But uh, what we can see, there are a lot of residents here now, so perhaps some of them really curious about uh, what has just happened. But uh, we just came from uh, Cerro Central Elementary School, which is uh, about, uh, uh, about a kilometer or a couple of kilometers from here. We are just assuming that the closest uh, polling center from here, so we don't know if, if they could have heard the explosion as part of the disabling process that was performed, uh, that was conducted uh, earlier a uh, few, uh, few moments ago. But uh, I can only uh, uh, assume that that is the closest, the Cerro uh, Elementary School, where a congresswoman by Sandra Sema, we were there because we were expecting congresswoman by Sandra Sema to cast her vote at 8 o'clock. So we are just assuming that's probably the closest, unless of course, uh, we could be wrong, and there's uh, another vo uh, voting center closer here, but uh, Ria. All right. Thank you very much, David Santos there, reporting from Cotabato City. Again, breaking news. The bomb squad in Cotabato City has just disabled a fragmentation grenade found in one of the side streets. Um, this was called in by residents in the area. The bomb squad came in. They covered the grenade with sandbags and then deliberately detonated it. So the, you're looking at live pictures. Um, the detonation happened just a few minutes ago. Now, an explosion was also reported in Cotabato City a night before the Bangsamoro Organic Law plebiscite. And we now talk to Chief Superintendent Eliseo Rasco, Regional Director of the Police Regional Office 12. Good morning, sir. Thank you for taking our call. Sir, are you on the line? Hello, sir? Hello. Okay. Yes, good morning. Thank you for taking our call. Hello. Yes. Sir, can you tell you us... You are uh, very weak. Your signal is very weak. Okay, sir. I will try to um, speak loudly. Can you tell us exactly how this grenade-throwing incident happened in one of the barangays in Cotabato City last night? Uh, last night, uh, uh, there, were, there was a report coming from my uh, city director that uh, a, hand a hand grenade was lobbed at the residence of a a judge. So there was uh, two loud uh, explosions, and uh, uh, fortunately, nobody was hurt or uh, there was uh, no damage to property reported. Sir, um, do you have any updates on the investigation as to the origin of this? Hello, hello. Hello, yes, sir. Uh, can you give us updates uh, on the investigation? Do you have any leads as to who might have been behind this? Uh, there are, we have no suspect yet. Uh, because uh, according to the bystander, uh, two men uh, riding in tandem in a motorcycle loved the said grenade. Uh, as of this time, I have no report yet from my uh, city director there. Okay, sir, do you see uh, the incident last night as a threat to today's plebiscite? Uh, it might be. Uh, it might be. Uh, they want to harass people. Uh, or uh, we are also looking at uh, other angles, like uh, personal or uh, job related to the said uh, judge. All right. Thank you very much, PRO 12 Regional Director, Chief Superintendent Eliseo Rasco. Presidential Peace Advisor Carlito Galvez confirms to CNN Philippines on Sunday that a confidential survey was held in the proposed Bangsamoro areas in December and this month. Galvez would not give further details on who commissioned the survey and what agency conducted it, but calls the survey results as extensive and convincing. One of the findings of the survey, according to Galvez, shows that Cotabato City will have an overwhelming yes vote, at least 70%. CNN Philippines is still trying to 
independently verify the authenticity of the survey. In a one-on-one -on -one interview, we asked the Armed Forces Chief turned Presidential Peace Advisor Carlito Galvez if there's a way voter turnout could be measured and why President Duterte made a final pitch in Cotabato last Friday for the Bangsamoro Law. There is a very, uh, very you know, uh, confidential survey na, na, na basa ko. And then, uh, talagang uh, very extensive yung ginawa nila last uh, December uh, 9 to 12. And then yung isa is ngayong uh, January, you know, January 9 to, to 12. Uh, ang nakita nila is uh, those who are for yes. Ang kanilang reason is there will be peace. Second is there will be reconciliation, there will be unity, there, there is progress. And pagka kinainan nyo, kinounter ng counter questions, why there is progress? Alam nila may black grant, uh, mayroon devolution of powers. So alam nila yung sagot. And uh, majority na ano, majority na ano, ng sa kanila is uh, talagang they are, they are convinced na the MILF can, ano, can really deliver the goods and the governance. 70% ng ano, na mga na-interviewed are uh, in favor na sabi nila na the MILF is now capable of uh, doing uh, the governance features. So yung, yung, ano, yung initial result na nakita namin, and then yung go, when we go, go around uh, the ARMMM, parang nag, ano, siya, nagtalagang, they, they risk convincing, ano, convincing uh, correlations at saka talagang similarities sa observation namin. One, ang sabi nga nila is uh, on the areas of Maguindanao, Lanao, and Tawi-Tawi, more than 95% to 100% ang magiging uh, turnout na yes. Second, yung sa, ano, sa Cotabato, uh, nung uh, kanilang uh, uh, initial ano, is 75%. We were surprised na bakit ano, 75%. Nung tinignan namin, demography ng, ano, ng Cotabato City is 57 are uh, Muslims, uh, 33 are Christians, and uh, the remaining are the nomads. So sa demographic ng, ano, configurations ng, ano, ng, uh, ng Cotabato City, and considering that uh, the MILF campaign and the MNLF campaign had joined together, mm -hmm. na talagang mag sila sa yes. So this, this, ano, this increased the factor na the possibility that uh, yes will be, you know, we will be overwhelming sa Cotabato City. Why, why Cotabato City na nagano si Presidente? Because meaning talaga sa Cotabato City, he want to make an impression na alam niya yung, ano, yung mangyayari sa Cotabato City. And we gave them the, the, he, he, uh, we gave them the, you know, the the result of the the you know, the result of the the survey nakatalagang yes, very you know, very conclusive and so i was so impressed with the you know, with the with the survey more than a million people in the south will decide on the creation of a new bangsamoro autonomous region in muslim mindanao or barmm our trisha terada gives us a look at preparations for the historic plebiscite happening today Two days ahead of the Bangsamoro Organic Law Plebiscit, these teachers have flocked to the Comelec office in Cotabato City. They want to secure their slots in the plebiscite committee. It matters so much to them that they will be able to serve during the historic vote on Monday. Willing po ako mag-serve sa Cotabato para po talagang kumbaga yung, yung bosses ng Cotabato City yung, para mabigay natin yung fair and just na ano, to vote. Kulang daw talaga yung magsiserve. Kaya sabi ko, sige na lang, magserve na lang ako. They know it's going to be tough. They will wake up early in time for the 3 a.m. assembly and end late to finish the counting, but they don't mind. Mga dalawang gabi ito na walang tulugan. So kailangan namin ng energy, yung presence of mind, of course. Hopefully po wala pong kaguluhang mangyayari. But the Comelec says there's no reason to worry because it's all set for the plebiscite. Authorities have already laid out security plans for the transport of ballots and the teachers as well. May mga assist na PNP para sa movement ng uh, mga teachers at sa kapag deploy ng mga teachers. Uh, we really need to achieve yung uh, objective natin na magkaroon ng honest, orderly, credible and uh, peaceful uh, plebiscit. At uh, we will provide uh, the democratic space and uh, let democracy work. A big day down south with a historic vote taking place in several parts of Mindanao. More than 2 million residents in Cotabato City, Isabela City and the autonomous region in Muslim Mindanao will decide whether to ratify the Bangsamoro law which allows the creation of the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region. This will replace the ARMM. The vote will also determine whether several towns in Lano del Norte and North Cotabato will also be included in the region. This landmark is seen to help resolve and resolve conflict and rebellion in the south. 
Now let's head on over to Sulcan Kurara town in Maguindanao, which is just outside Cotabato City. And this is where the Moro Islamic Liberation Front Camp Darapanan is located. Our Trisha Terada is there now. Trisha, good morning. Korea, well, they used guns for decades of armed struggle. Today, MILF combatants are holding or going to hold pens and papers to chart their future. It's the first time in a long time for many of them to participate in a democratic process. And that includes no less than MILF chairman Alhaj Murad Ibrahim. Now, days ahead of the plebiscite, we had the chance to speak with him and he shared his thoughts for today's historic vote. kita namin yung overwhelming support ng mga tao. So, we are very hopeful na talagang maratify na ang BUS. Well, Reed, as of this time, we are waiting for Murad's arrival. Several or others have uh, started lining up here for their names, looking for their names and their designated precincts. They get to cast their votes in a bit. Again, only written yes or no or its dialect counterpart will be accepted. Ria? Okay, so it is 7 o'clock. Have uh, voters actually been able to cast their vote yet? <laughs> Hello, Trisha, can you hear me? All right. Okay, thank you very much. That was Trisha Tirad reporting there from Sultan Kudrat. And millions of Mindanaoans will cast their vote today whether to approve or not the creation of a new Bangsamoro Autonomous Region. But those who fled from Mindanao due to the conflict or the Moro diaspora may not be able to participate in the Bangsamoro plebiscite. Our correspondent Makoy Popioko tells us many of them joined the discourse even if they were not able or will not be able to participate in the polls. Johaira Rashid is the last entrepreneur left among her family members who attempted to relocate in Manila. Relocation to bigger cities proved difficult as many of her loved ones went back to Iligan City, some to other provinces. Gusto ko po sa Mindanao, makakasama mo yung pamilya mo, makakayakap mo sila, kahit anong oras nandiyan ka para sa kanila. Hindi ka tulad na nandito ka, kung may sakit man sila, hindi mo sila maalagaan. Gaya ng pag-aalaga mo pag nandun ka. But being the breadwinner, Juhaira is determined to succeed. She's now tending a small novelty sidewalk stall in Divisoria. The number of Muslim stall owners in Divisoria nearly doubled in the last five years. A Muslim traders group says many newcomers arrived in mid-2017, the height of the Battle of Marawi. Not just in Divisoria, but also in Capo. Walking around this neighborhood outside the Golden Mosque in Capo, Manila, I can't help but feel like I was brought back to Marawi City. And here, Maranaos are selling products that uh, before can only be found in uh, Mindanao, like this sakurab or white scallions that are turned into a Maranao condiment called palapa. Makasri Imam, who used to live right in the street where ISIS Maoti group hoisted their flag in Marawi, is now saving up for his own business near the Golden Mosque. Pakunti-kunti lang yung nga mabuhay dito. Mga karaos tayo. Pidati tayong ano eh, negosyante eh. Kahit ano, pwede. Johaira and Makasri are among the thousands of displaced Moros who fled from conflict-torn Mindanao to find greener pastures elsewhere. As thousands vote for the plebiscite on the new Bangsamoro Autonomous Region on Monday, the Moro diaspora like Johaira and Makasri who could not participate in the polls pin their hopes on their loved ones. Most Maranaos we talked to in Divisoria and Quiapo said a resounding yes to the Bangsamoro plebiscite and convinced their families left in Mindanao to write that in their ballot. Sana kung ano man yung maging kahantungan ng BOL na yan, sana po maging, maging susi na to para mas maging maganda yung buhay namin dito sa sa Mindanao po. Para po hindi na kami nagkakahiwaiwalay ng mga pamilya namin. Basta pa yun na magbago yung ano, mga kabuhayan ng ano. Baka mawala yung mga ano-ano diyan, mga, um, mga gulo-gulo diyan. Hindi ka matakot. For them, the promise of a better Bangsamoro could be their ticket back to Mindanao. To a Bangsamoro that is new but familiar. A place 
where there is long-lasting peace and better opportunities. Makoy Popioko, CNN, Philippines. From the top stories here in the country to headlines across the globe, at least 79 people were killed and another 66 injured in central Mexico after a ruptured gasoline pipeline exploded Friday evening. Aerial images of the pipeline tweeted by Hidalgo's governor show massive black plumes of smoke and fire high above the area. Residents in nearby zones have been evacuated. State oil company Pemex said an investigation into the cause of the blast was underway. It initially said the explosion was caused by illegal taps in the pipeline. The incident comes after Mexican President Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador has been working to eliminate the fuel theft. Gas stations in several Mexican states and the country's capital have been running dry for nearly two weeks. The second summit between Donald Trump and Kim Jong-un is a go. On Friday, the White House announced another meeting between the U.S. president and North Korean leader is in the planning stages. They expect the summit to take place near the end of February. This comes after Mr. Trump met with North Korea's lead negotiator on nuclear talks at the White House Friday. The U.S. president talked with Kim Jong-chol for more than an hour and a half, according to Press Secretary Sarah Sanders. The two discussed denuclearization and a second summit. On Saturday, envoys from the U.S. and North Korea met for talks in Sweden.